what are the intercepts of the function g of n is equal to negative 2 times 3n minus 1 times 2n plus 1. All right, so the first question is you're going to ask yourself, what are intercepts? Well, intercepts are going to be coordinates of the points where the function that's given intersects both the y-axis and the x-axis, okay? Now, in some problems, uh, you might not see an x in here, okay? You might see instead an n or an a or a b or whatever. Um, in this problem, though, you know, we can call this the n-axis. I know that sounds a little weird. But generally speaking, the horizontal axis is going to be, is going to represent the variables here in the function. And then the function value itself, here they're calling g of n instead of y, that'll be found on the vertical axis. Okay? But you can think of this like a big old y, and you can think of all the n's as just x's. That's fine. Um, so let's just draw a quick sketch of a graph. I'm not even saying that this, uh, what I'm going to draw, looks anything like this. Looks anything like the function you're going to have, but just, just pretend it looks like this, okay? Some kind of craziness. What are the x and y uh, intercepts? Well, here is an x-intercept, right? Or a horizontal axis intercept. Here's another x or a horizontal axis intercept. We can call them n-intercepts in this problem. I know they might be a little weird, right? But every time the graph crosses that horizontal axis, it's known as an x-intercept, okay? Every place now that this graph crosses the y-axis or the vertical axis or the axis where the function's value is on, namely just at this one point, now I'll put it in black, that's known as the y-intercept, okay? And I'll just label this over here, call it then x-intercepts. All right, so maybe what we're going to do, why don't we make this simple? Get rid of this notation. Get rid of the n. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's a letter. Who cares? Call it y, call it x, call this now y in your equation, rewrite it. And then everywhere you see an n, just put an x, okay? 3x minus 1, and then 2x plus 1. Cool? All right. Now, let's first find the y-intercept value. Now, you only should have one value, actually, for your y-intercept. All right. Uh, if you didn't, it wouldn't be a function. Actually, you wouldn't pass the vertical line test. Check out some of our videos on that. Um, and in this particular case, we know something special about the y-intercept. Right? What's special about this point? What's special about that point is that we know one of the values of the of this point. Right? Remember, this point has two coordinates to it: an x and a y. We know that the x value is going to be zero. We don't know the y value though. Right? We do know, remember, coordinates are always written x, y. We do know the x value is 0 because it's not to the right on the x-axis, it's not to the left on the x-axis, it's right you know, at the middle of the x-axis, which has an x value of 0. So what that means is that you can basically take this 0 value and plug it into your function everywhere you see an x. Okay? And then solve. So y is equal to negative 2 times 3 times 0 minus 1, times then 2 times 0, plus 1. Simplify. Negative 2, that's just 0 minus 1. That's going to be 0 plus 1. Keep going. Negative 2, negative 1, 1. What do we get? Two negatives and a positive make a positive. Two times 1s is just a 2, so it's just a positive 2. There's your y-intercept, okay? That's your y-intercept value, so let's write it down. Y-intercept is equal to now, you could write it's equal to 2, that's fine. You can also write it as a coordinate. You could say that the y-intercept then is 0, comma 2, okay? Because the x value is 0, the y is 2, just like I was saying over here, right? We don't know the y value. All right, put a little box around it, make it look pretty. Or handsome, whatever you're into. And then, let's now do the x-intercepts. Now, the x-intercept is basically the same concept, right? The only difference is we might have only one, or we could have five, or we could have a lot of them, all right? In this problem, it should turn out that we have two of them, all right? Um, because we have two terms that have a variable in it. But what is it? what do we know that's special about now all the x-intercepts? What do you know about the point? You know one thing about it. What do they all have in common? What they all have in common is that they have a common y-value this time. 
I know it's weird. It's like, wait a minute, it's x-axis, but it has a common y that's all zero? I know that sounds weird, but it is what it is. So the x value is some question mark. I don't know what it is, but the y value is going to be zero. So it's x comma y, right? The y value of this is zero. It's not up on the y-axis. It's not down on the y-axis. It just lies right in the middle of the y-axis. That's zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero, okay? But these are definitely positive x values, and these are definitely negative x values. I don't know what they are, all right? So now what you're going to do is you're going to take that same function, so write it again. So y is equal to negative 2 times 3x minus 1 times 2x. Sorry, I'm trying to move quickly so my handwriting gets worse. My handwriting is just terrible to start with, so it, what's terrible from terrible? Horrible? Horrendous? y is going to be equal to now negative 2. All we're going to do is start plugging in then uh, uh, 0 for now y. Okay, so I kind of jumped the gun there a little bit. Go back and plug in a 0 for the y now. Okay, that's all you can do. 0 is going to be equal to negative 2 times and 3x minus 1, 2x plus 1. Okay, now what do you do from here? You're like, what the heck? I don't know. What, how am I going to solve this? This looks weird, right? Ask yourself a question. All right, what does this term have to be? What does this term have to become, this whole thing inside the parenthesis, in order for this whole thing to become zero? Well, if you think about it, this term is multiplied by this term, which is then multiplied by this term. So you're thinking, man, if I could just get this thing to go to zero or become zero, then zero times negative two is zero, and zero times whatever the heck this thing would be at that particular point would also be zero. So who the heck cares? It's going to be zero, right? And that would make this whole side zero. What that then means is that you're asking yourself this question. What value of x should this be for this term to equal 0? In other words, if you wrote yourself out a, an equation, it would be 3x minus 1 equals 0. That's how you would go about and solve it. Now, it didn't just have to be this term. Couldn't it have been this term as well? Right? What happens if this term becomes 0? In other words, if I could plug in a special value there, you might already be able to see it, maybe negative one half, right? If I could plug in that value in here, this whole term would come become zero, right? And if this thing's zero, well, zero times whatever the heck this thing would be would be zero, and zero times the negative two is zero, and that would be all zero, and that would equal zero. Zero, 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 okay? So to answer that question for yourself, if you can't figure that out by just looking at it, which is totally okay, you set up a math equation. You want this thing to get to zero. So you say, if this thing, I want this thing to equal zero. And then the beauty of algebra is you have a series of steps to follow that can get you to your destination. So let's do the algebra. Go back to this now. Add one on both sides. The ones cancel. Three X is then going to be equal to one. Divide the three out from both sides and you realize then X is going to be equal to positive one third. For some reason I wrote one half. But that's the value x has to be. If x were positive one-third, right, this whole thing would have been a positive one. Positive one minus one is, oh, zero. Huh. That should make sense. Let's take a look at the next one. Do the algebra. Minus one from both sides. Two x is going to be equal to negative one. Divide two out of both sides. That's becoming a three, but just negative one-half. Isn't that what we said at the beginning? Right? This whole thing goes to zero if x is negative one half, which would make this whole thing go to zero, which would make that true that it's equal to zero. So I have two x-intercepts, and that's what I kind of mentioned at the beginning. Right, so our x-intercept now, we have two values. It's going to be an x-value of one-third, right, you can write comma zero, because that's definitely going to be the y-value, and then it'll be a negative one half, comma zero. Cool? And that's it. Those are the intercepts. Now, if you don't trust me, go to your calculator. But I want you to trust me. But don't. Trust, but verify. I like that saying. But then if you really trusted the person, would you need to verify it? Hmm. Maybe it's not a good saying. Anyway, plug in your function. So do negative 2. Please do not hit this button. That's the subtraction button. That's the negative button. So negative 2, parenthesis then, uh, 3 times x. I know it says n, but you're going to use x. Minus then 1, close the parenthesis, open the parenthesis, 2x, then plus 1. Close the parenthesis. Hit and uh, don't hit enter, <laughs> hit graph. Look at that. Let's zoom in, hit zoom, 
hit the number two for zooming in, and then hit enter. Boom. Isn't that interesting? This mark right here represents negative one. This mark right here represents, and if you, if you want to see, just keep moving this out, right? Right? Look, look, right there. That looks like it's almost about, right, right about there. It looks like it's about one third, positive one third. Oh, look, that's what we said, positive one third. Go all the way over to here. Click, 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 click. And what are we getting to? Uh oh, come back. Whoa, oh, 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 I overshot it. Isn't that about Nate? I mean, I know it's not exact. I know I can get it to be, but isn't that about negative one half there? Right? Isn't that what we said? Right? Look what it goes up to. It goes up to a height of two. I'm not going to go all the way up there, but it goes up to looks like a height of two. Now, if you want, you can get very specific, right? If you'd like, you can go to your table. So hit second graph to get to your table. Now, the problem is that I kind of have this stuff stepped, you know, by, I, I excuse me, I have this stuff stepped by a value of one. So you might miss a little bit of detail, but you can always go to your table set function. So you can go hit second window and you see where it says delta table. What that means is that's going to be your increment. For this one, I suggest you do one third. So just do one divided by three. Okay. Now go back to your table, hit second table. And what happens, you see how the values now are incremented by one third. So let's go down. Let's go down to a value of negative one half, which won't even be on there. Okay, negative one half. Well, that's not really going to make much sense, but let's just go down to zero. I wanted to show you the third. So when x is zero, y is two. That's what we said it should be. Okay, if you keep going down then, when x is going to be positive one third, look, the y value is zero. That's what we said it should be. Right, and then just to prove it to you, go back to the table set, go back, and just type in one divided by two now to step it by a half. Go back to your table, second graph, and then find the negative half value, and there it is, right? Negative half, the y value is zero. Negative half, the y value is zero. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in, okay? I really do hope this helped. I hope I showed you a few ways to think through it, calculate it, and uh, yeah, I hope... I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it enough to tell your friends, right? Tell your classmates. If you feel like this helped you out at all, I have a feeling that I might be able to help out somebody else, and uh, I'd, be, I'd be so appreciative if you can send them our way. Look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.